It's Create Day, my friends. I've got some nature-inspired, neutral nursery decor DIYs for you today. Welcome to my channel. Let's get started. I'm starting with these two 8x10 frames, and the frame is covered with a, see how shiny it is? It's actually a paper that is just like glued on there to look like wood. So we're going to give it a couple of coats of Dixie Belle's Slick Stick so my paint will adhere to it. It was so shiny I was afraid that um, it would just chip right off very easily. And with the Dixie Belle Slick Stick you do one coat, you let it dry two to three hours, and then you do a second coat and let it dry overnight. I'm taking two pieces of cardstock and cutting it down to the 8x10 size. I'm going to be attaching my drop cloth that I'm using for these directly onto this cardstock and then putting that onto the glass portion of the frame. So now I'm just going to trim this down to size and then I will be able to uh, apply this um, directly to that drop cloth with this Fabri-Tac glue. I'm going to spread this all over the cardstock and then I'm going to use a brush to spread it around. I want that drop cloth to be completely adhered to something so that it doesn't come loose and um, like pucker over time because I had that happen on a previous project that I did where I did not uh, glue the drop cloth to a um, you know the whole surface. So I'm just going to glue that on there, spread it out, but a uh, word of caution if you use a brush to spread that Fabri-Tac glue you will have to throw it away. It does not wash out. So I'm just adding a little bit to the corners that weren't quite secure and then I can flip this over, make sure it's all smoothed out, and then just trim off the excess around the edges that I don't need. I only need enough to go over and adhere this to the piece of glass. I'm using E6000 for this part and I'm going to put a little bit of this in each corner. I don't need it over the whole thing because that drop cloth is really secure onto that cardstock. I place the piece of glass over it and just press down on all those corners to get it well adhered. So then I can go in and um, to glue this around those edges. I'm just trimming out that corner so I don't have a lot of bulk because this is going to be a really tight fit in that frame. I'm using the Turbo Tacky glue to brush on just the edges of the cardstock and then I will fold that drop cloth down over it and just hold it for a few minutes until it's in place. I'm using two transfers from the Iron Orchid Designs Whispering Willow. I have got a cute little badger. Mm, look at that. And then this little hedgehog. Oh my gosh, he's so adorable. I'm also using the typesetting stamp from IOD as well as the Alphabelli stamp. And I will leave links to the things that I can in the description box and there will also be a complete product list of everything I use today. I'm starting with Stays on Ink in Timber Brown to do my B. I'm going to ink that up really well and put that in place and press it down longer than you normally would on a regular non-porous surface because this fabric will really soak that up. For the Alphabelli stamp, I'm using Archival Ink Pebble Beach and also the mask that comes with these stamps. I'm using the, the B mask to put over there so that I can put that Alphabelli stamp over this and it won't, um, it'll be like it's behind the B. So it will protect that B from the design. And I uh, ink up my stamp and put that over it and so it will um, not interfere with the with the B. It will just look like that design is behind it. 
And of course, it didn't turn out perfect. It's not perfectly centered. That's okay. I make up for it by making the same mistake on the next one. So now I have my H inked up with the Timber Brown. I'm going to apply that, put the mask on it, and then do the same Alpha Belly stamp over it. Now it's time for our transfers, so I'm just going to go ahead and remove the backing sheet on this, lay him down, and get my little transfer stick and rub, rub, rub away until he releases onto that fabric. It does take a little more elbow grease when you're working on fabric than it does on just a hard surface. And you can see right there how it's lighter. That's where it shows you that it's lifting from the transfer sheet onto the fabric. I have this label mold that I got off of Amazon. I will leave the link below in the description box. And it, it's a two-piece set, so you get a total of 10 different labels. And they are all really nice. I've used them before in a previous project. So I'm just using my IOD air dry clay. I put cornstarch in the mold first. And then I um, just scrape off the back, get it nice and flat roll that out and we have this really pretty natural looking mold to put on the front of the frame. I'm using Gorilla Wood Glue for this. You can use tight bond or tacky glue, just whatever you have that will work. So I'm just going to go ahead and lay that on there, uh, check with my ruler to make sure it's centered, and then gently press it down and let it sit up for a few minutes before I start painting. I make another one for the other frame and then I'm going to go in and start painting with Fusion in the color Parchment. I got these little sample sizes so that I could try out these different whites because I don't have a lot of um, nice off-whites. And yes, they are a pot of inspiration. This paint is just wonderful. It glides on so smooth. I'm in love with it. So I'm going to go ahead and give these both uh, two coats front and back. I printed out the names of the animals on my computer, just on regular computer paper, just to make sure I got the size right. And when it fit the way I wanted it to, I'm taking some bakery tissue paper. I will leave the link for that in the description box as well. And I'm going to just tape this onto a piece of computer paper, then run it through my printer to print those names off on the bakery tissue so that I can decoupage them onto those little um, labels. So here it's printed out onto the tissue paper and I'm just going to go ahead and cut those out. Now this is a really important step if you're using an inkjet printer like I did. You need to heat set this, otherwise that Mod Podge will just make that ink run all over and make a big mess. So I probably heat set these for about 20 to 30 seconds. Then I tore around the edges just to give it a more natural organic look and it would blend better into that white paint and you can't even see the edges of the paper.
I put it in place and made sure it was in the center and now I can just pick up one end and put some Mod Podge down and then gently press that down into it and smooth out any wrinkles and then go to the other side and do the same thing. Then I went around the edges with just a little bit of Mod Podge to seal that down and once that dried I went over the entire thing um, in that center area of the label with some Mod Podge. I'm using chalk paint in the color Java to paint the outside part of that little label. I'm using these really small paint brushes. This is a set I got from Hobby Lobby. They are not high-end brushes, but they work really well. Now this was probably the most tedious part of um, all these DIYs. A really tiny area to paint and not get it all over the outside of that label or on the inside. And even though I'm really nearsighted, I was really kind of like George Costanza uh, squinting my way through this. So it turned out okay. I It's okay that there's a little bit on the inner and outer edges that aren't completely covered, but I'm okay with that. Now I'm going to take my antique gold rub and buff and just very carefully with my finger place a little bit of this on the high spots of that label. And here's how it looks. I re then repeat the process on the other frame. I used my heat tool to help me remove the stickers on the back and then I lightly sanded it so that there weren't any sticker marks. And then we are ready to put this back into place and it is done. I think these turned out really cute. You'll have to let me know what you think. This is the bakery tissue that I use. I got it off of Amazon and we'll leave the link below. And for this next project, I'm using it to decoupage over a mason jar. So I lay my jar in there to figure out how much of this I need. It's actually almost the perfect length to wrap around that jar, but I needed to get the height. I add a little bit of water to my Mod Podge. I don't like it to be super thick. To me, it just spreads on much easier and I have a better result if it's a little watered down. So I get that mixed up and then I'm going to paint this over the jar just in a section and then start with the tissue paper to get that um, glued down there. So I start with the first section laying that tissue paper on there and just smoothing it out the best I can. I don't care if there's some wrinkles in this. Um, I don't It's just personal preference for me. I wanted this to just have a um, completely natural and not so fussy look to it. So the fact that there's some wrinkles doesn't bother me. I'm just going to press this down and then flip that back and glue the next section on. Once I got it wrapped all the way around, I did have a little more overlap than I wanted, so I just trimmed that off and then pressed down that little final piece.
For the bottom, I just went ahead and added a little bit of the Mod Podge down on that bottom rim and just slightly over onto the top of it so that I could fold the remaining bakery paper on top of that and just kind of, you know, just wrap it around that bottom. After that, I just went ahead and took my Mod Podge and went over the entire piece. This is a little bird that I thrifted, and I'm going to give him two coats of the Fusion paint in the color Cast Iron. I'm so glad I got these little sample jars to try these out. I, I just absolutely love this paint. This is a really great color. It's a black, but it's not a really deep, dark, rich black. It's just, it's such a neutral black. I just absolutely love it. I'm using the toadstool mold from IOD to make a bunch of little mushrooms to go around the bottom of my mason jar. I'm dusting the ones I want to use first with some cornstarch and then I'm going to use my IOD air dry clay to go ahead and make my castings. And again, I'm using the Gorilla Wood Glue to apply my castings to my jar. I paint the lid of the mason jar with the Fusion paint in the color Cast Iron. With my French linen chalk paint, I'm going to give all of my mushrooms a good base coat. Once that base coat was dry, I grabbed my acrylic paint in the color Woodsy Smoke. I'm going to water that down a little bit, brush that onto the mushrooms, and then dab off the excess with a baby wipe. This will add just a little bit more dimension into that first layer of paint. I'm going to use Dixie Bell's Dixie Dirt in the color Ash to add some color and texture in between all these mushrooms as if they were in the ground. I used this on my previous project, my mixed media project. So I'm applying my Mod Podge to give the Dixie Dirt something to stick to. The next step is to add some Dixie Belle Grunge Glaze on top of the mushrooms to add just yet another little layer of very subtle color. And it was so subtle that I didn't even wipe it back. I just brushed it on and let it dry. Next I'm using my Select Seal Matte Finish Sealer to go over the Dixie Dirt 
it will seal that in there and it also makes it darker which I really like. The final layer of color for the mushrooms is this paint that I mixed up using my white chalk paint and some Dixie Bell chalk paint in the color putty. I'm just getting a little bit of that on my brush and wiping off the excess on a paper towel and then lightly brushing over the mushrooms. I'm using that same antique gold rub and buff to highlight around the rim of my mason jar lid. And here's the paint I used that I mixed up that you just saw in that previous step. Dixie Belle Putty mixed with my white chalk paint. And I'm going to give this little bird a couple of coats of this. I used the chalk paint instead of the fusion paint because the fusion paint has a top coat built in and I wanted to wet distress. But this did not, even just with two coats on there, I could not get the wet distress to reveal any of that black underneath. So I did go in with some very fine grit sandpaper, very gingerly, just being very careful. I did not want to go back down into that original color. So I just had to be patient and go really light-handed until I got the look that I wanted. To seal my little bird, I'm using Jolie's Clear Finishing Wax. I'm just brushing this on and then I will wipe back the excess with a clean cloth. And now I'm going to seal in all my little mushrooms with my Select Seal Matte Sealer. It's time to add some fairy lights to my little jar. I got these off of Amazon. They're very simple on off. The underside is where the screws are so that you can change the batteries. So I want to make sure I attach this to that lid using the other side. And I'm going to use Velcro so that this will be able to be removed out of the jar to change the batteries to make it easier. I'm attaching them to the underside of this lid, so I'm going to take some rubbing alcohol and clean that off so I will get good adhesion. I cut out my first little strip there and then just make sure that it fits. And when I, that's good to go, I go ahead and line that up with the other strip that I need and cut that one to the same size. I attach those two pieces together and peel off the backing so that I can go ahead and stick this to the top of that uh, battery case. And I'm just looking at the directions to make sure that I, you know, how long I have to wait before I can actually do anything with this. So I'm going to go ahead and just press it down onto that lid and then we'll do a little trial run here by sticking it in the jar to see how it's going to look. Mm, nice. Okay so now to kind of finish off this jar I've got some twine here that I'm just going to hot glue around that upper part where the decoupage paper ends and that you can still see the glass. So I just kind of want to cover all that up to give it a more finished look. I 
I burn off all the little fuzzies with a lighter. You just want to be careful, but um, I haven't had any problems doing this yet. And the next thing to do is to unwrap our string lights and get them in the jar and see how this is going to look. And we are finally at the point where I can glue my little bird on. I'm going to use E6000 for that. And while he was drawing, I couldn't resist getting video of those lights in the dark. They're so pretty. For the final touch, I'm adding a paper leaf and paper flower just with some hot glue up at that top portion uh, just below the, the lid, the, the part that you screw on and off so it won't interfere with getting access to the fairy lights. I really enjoyed making all of these projects. I think they turned out really cute. Let me know what you think in the comments. And thank you so very much for hanging out with me today. I really appreciate your support and all the kind words that you give me. I really hope that you find my content useful and will give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel. But most of all, I hope I've inspired you to go create something. See you next time.